Welcome. The juice is loose. It's okay. OJ is in Florida, and Matt owns his Bronco now. Slow golf, fast ATVs, dad jokes, and helmet controversies. Keep us busy this week. Let's go. Welcome home, beautiful. Welcome home, beautiful. Way to put your emphasis in the wrong syllables in what? that uh, opening. Why? <laughs> because it's like if you put the correct punctuation in there, just ignored it. It's okay. OJ's in Florida. Matt owns his Bronco now. What did I do wrong? No. Slow golf, fast ATVs, dead <laughs> jokes, and helmet controversies keep us busy this week. It's like you added a bunch of commas. <laughs> bro. Bro. That happens. Bro. Whatever. Bro. Deal with it. <laughs> what have you been doing? Um, well, well, besides looking up inappropriate things. I didn't mean to. We, your wife needed to know something, and <laughs> instead of using the real that dictionary, was, <laughs> <but> <laughs> I went you, to Urban Dictionary, and I found multiple <laughs> other things, because, exactly. you know... You you were supposed to find one thing and you found something else. Yes, it's uh, it's it's, it's not it's really inappropriate. Just gross. Y- no, it's inappropriate. It's inappropriate. Gross. It's yeah. For those wondering, just look up wind tunnel. We won't go into it. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just look up wind urban tunnel. dictionary. Wind tunnel and urban dictionary. But don't at the same time. Yeah, don't do that. Please don't. You'll embarrass Matthew. <laughs> So what's good? You went, yeah, you went so up north. We were, we were up north this past weekend. This is the first time that uh, we were able to take Olivia up north to Higgins Lake here in Michigan. Beautiful area. Awesome lake. Uh, my mom's family is at a place up there since the 40s. And we still own the property and have the original cabin on the property, which is really awesome. So, yeah, we were up north and did some fishing and a little bit of swimming. and um, it's a good time. It's a real good time. You caught a fish. I did. From I what ca- I hear. I uh, caught a 13-inch perch. Money. Along with a whole bunch of other fish. But, uh, yeah, 13-inch perch. It was a monster. And I was reeling it up. I was like, man, it's a nice fish. And I get over to the side of the boat, and it gets it lands in the boat. And uh, um, Hank was on the boat with my dad and I and Hank went after the fish and the hooks were flying around and I was trying to keep Hank back and the hooks back from his face and then my dad I said dad just pick him up throw him in the live hole measure him when we get home so we did and I said if he's 16 inches I'll get him mounted but he wasn't he's was only 13 still nice fish I was really proud biggest perch I've ever caught did you think it was 13 or 16? I thought it was all of a foot but I mean I, oh, okay. I saw it for less than a minute between the chaos right, and everything, right. and I just threw it in there. So I'll measure it when we get back to the cabin. Straight chaos. It was just a disaster zone. Happens. It's okay. It was worth it. How, how about you? What you been up to from last week? Oh, not much. Uh, hit a 39 at Golf League last week. Two birds. Pretty happy about that. Um, off putts, too. Like Not even like easy putts. They were both 15 feet or so. So that was pretty exciting. And then... Uh, sister-in-law's birthday was Friday, which was awesome because my brother-in-law owns an ATV. So, and he got, he has about 10 acres or so, I think. Uh, but anyways, Jameson first was very nervous and I'm like, no, no, come on. Like we can go drive around on it. So I got him on there and I started going slow and around the property or whatnot and then by the end of the night you just faster 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 dude i was cruising <laughs> i would be driving by mel and she would just give me the death look like if you go any faster I'm like okay i won't don't worry <laughs> we're going as fast as we can right now so <laughs> not gonna worry about that uh yeah then just had a relaxing day on saturday and then um sunday went over to the walk of hope here in saginaw for uh depression and suicide awareness so that was really cool. Uh, 2,000 people. Over 2,000 people showed up to that. That was pretty impressive. Now, I'm proud to be part of that group um, as someone who suffers from depression and whatnot. It was good to see all the people out there and all the support that's out there. And for all those that 
suffer from anything like that, you know, always feel free to ask. Always feel free to reach out. Always feel free to talk about it. Don't be afraid of it. I mean, it's not something to be afraid of. It's not th- something to be scared of at all. It's it's normal. It's it's out there. Um, just need to talk about it more. So that's kind of the goal of the walk and everything and the support of the people out there. Uh, it's a good cause. Um, it was a good time. It was again. It was nice seeing all the support out there and everybody. So if anyone ever needs to talk or anything, man, reach out. You know how to get a hold of us. But yeah, do that. So absolutely. Anyways, <clears throat> on to other fun things. I don't even know what else is next. Uh, we got to talk about uh, how we screwed up his dad's. Oh, that's right. That's the best part. <laughs> the best part. All right, you got him. So yeah. Um, are we? We should do fail first, so we end on a good note. <laughs> okay, that's a good okay. idea. <laughs> so this doesn't have to do with my daughter, because it was actually a pretty good week with her. I mean, it was with my dog. You failed as a pet parent. So that's worse than failing as a parent. I know. So <laughs> I uh, I was playing with Hank up north, and he was running through the water and stuff. He was acting all fine and happy, and he went out in the boat with us for a while fishing, and um, all of a sudden his tail started bothering him. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. Come to find out, I think we figured out that he has something called swimmer's tail or limber tail. So basically he was wagging his tail so hard in the damn water <laughs> that he strained the muscles in his tail, and he can't like lift his tail up how it's supposed to because his muscles are all sore. Um, let me stop. I think my sister's listening right now, or if you do listen to us, Melissa, that's what Pepsi had back in the day. Okay, continue. So, uh, um, he progressively got worse throughout the day on Saturday to the point where Saturday night he didn't sleep at all. And the only time he would lay down is with, if I was sitting there laying next to him. Mm-hmm. And he would lay down for a little bit and he wouldn't whimper anymore and they would have to walk around the cabin. It's a really tiny cabin, so just walking laps around a table on a laminate floor right, with right. his nails. Is Making <laughs> everyone wake up. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of the night. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he's getting better, but... It sucked. I didn't even know that was a thing until it happened. It was kind of sad. <laughs> That's, I remember my sister. This happened when we were at my grandparents' cottage up in Caseville. It's like, she's like, oh, no, Pepsi's tail's broken. And my dad's like, no, it's not. We'll take her to the vet, though, because I have no idea what's going on. But, yeah, same thing. Just got too tired. Didn't know that was possible. Yeah, it's, I mean, of all the thwapping that Hank does with his <laughs> tail against That thing's like a weapon and, of mass destruction. Oh, absolutely. I think he dented my fridge with it <laughs> that's awesome yeah he's got a messed up tail right now it's sad he's not himself poor pup um so my fail um i guess i will say saturday morning uh, mel and i rotate who gets up with the kids i usually get up saturday she usually gets up sunday so the other one can sleep in so at least one night a weekend hey we could sleep in for an extra hour basically it's all it ends up being an hour or two but hey it's worth it so I get up with Lucas, and I put him on the floor, and he just now is really starting to scoot and crawl and, and get ready to start moving and everything. So I put him on the on the floor, and we got a little piano. He can, like, sit, and then come up and play and everything. Is he like Schroeder from Peanuts? Yeah. Charlie Brown? Yeah, exactly. It's pretty much, yeah, because he just sits at it. Like, <laughs> makes some cool tunes. Um, ask Jameson what his favorite key is, and he'll hit the B button every time. It's kind of funny. Don't know why. That's it's got like a guitar on it and like drums and all everything else, but he wants to hit the B. Ding ding ding. I don't even know if that's a B. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways <laughs> I digress. Uh he's sitting up and just playing with like his blocks and everything and all of a sudden you could tell like he got in a, hey, I'm gonna go crawl. Well, I didn't realize the piano was close as it was, so he went to crawl and like lunged forward and smacked his head on the piano. It's a little it's not like don't think of this piano as a grand piano. It's like a little plastic piano that costs twenty dollars at Target, <laughs> but <laughs> nonetheless, like he hit it and just bah! started ball, and then I felt bad. I was like, "Oh, I should have done something," but I didn't. So then he had a little bump on his head. Olivia started climbing. We got like those two little steps in the back of her house, mm-hmm. and she figured out how those were going up. Well, she it's got really cocky way. the other day and tried to go up really fast. And missed the step <laughs> and hit her lip on it. And I go grab her right away. She was crying. She was bleeding a little bit. And she is like, what happened? I said, she just, I don't know. <laughs> she just was clumsy and just missed. 
She's a year old. Yeah. It happens. <laughs> like, that's funny. So, I mean, on, on, the, on the positive side here in the wins. Yes. So, I, I, I'm a, I got a twofer here. Oh. Um, I uh, not only I got to take Olivia, I guess we can call it swimming for the first time, but mm-hmm. she didn't swim. She just dipped her toes into the lake yeah. and screamed. <laughs> but we went to the lake the first time, which was nice. Um, and then tonight, before I left, so my mom, thank you, mom, came over and watched Olivia because Shayna's out of town watching the Backstreet Boys concert tonight. Backstreet's back. All right. So she made a whole bunch of t-shirts on her cricket. I understand that. how that works now. I was Isn't it confused. cool? Yeah, it's just like iron on materials. Pretty neat. So yeah, she made some t-shirts for her and her friends are at the concert. Be a grand old time, I'm sure. <laughs> um, you'll never catch me dead at a Backstreet Boys concert. <laughs> anyway, so tonight... Um, <laughs> fed Olivia supper and everything. We're hanging out. She's acting a little tired. So I get her ready for bed and brush her teeth. And 30 seconds after I started rocking her, she passed out. Nice. I'm not even kidding. 30 seconds. Nice. It was unbelievable. So Magic I just sat touch. there and I started. They gave her a little blanket, and their blanket's got like a bear stuffed animal built into it. It's kind of creepy if you think about it. But Is it like one of the bear heads in the like little like foot blanket? Pretty much, around? yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So she was holding that, and she's just out. I was like, what the heck? This is awesome. Usually it takes like 15 minutes of screaming and crying and trying to crawl off me. Yeah, that was a successful last That's awesome. Days. Um, So mine, uh, there's a little backstory. So we've been, back in November before Lucas was even born, um, Jameson went on the potty at school, and we're just like, oh, well, I guess we're going to potty train him now. And that's what we're going to do. So we went out, made a big deal, bought a little potty, brought it home, sat on there for 30 seconds. He peed. We're like, well, hell, this is going to be easy. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but basically, he's not done that since. And it is now August. But every once in a while, he still goes at school. So this past uh, Friday, he ended up going at school twice. We're like, oh, man, that's awesome. So uh, I'm going to give a shout out actually to my wife for my, my dad you know not fail my dad win i'm gonna give it to melanie for a mom win uh this evening she sat with him got him to sit on the toilet for 45 minutes until he peed and it literally took 45 minutes for him to pee but then we made it a big deal called everybody hey 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 he peed yay you walked in and i think he was like wait why is matt actually here I only see him on the phone. And then you made Lucas cry because you looked at him. But <laughs> nonetheless, I, w- I will pass my dad win on to my lovely wife, Melanie, for a mom win. Yay. Yay. I peed. I peed. And speaking of pee, we'll talk about something that makes everybody pee. Here. So... I've had this for probably a month and a half now. Been waiting. It's still good for another week and a half, two weeks. Oh, good. Yeah, money. Um, New Belgium's Juicifer IPA. Um, I am not one of these hazy, juicy IPA fans, but I have heard good things. And I have not had this beer, actually, at all. Because I had two cans, and I was saving them for you and I. Excellent. So I appreciate it. Galaxy Citra Hops, <clears throat> Hazy IPA. Galaxy, eh? Yeah, Galaxy, eh? Big Galaxy fan. Yeah, are you? You Canadian too, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Devil, devilishly juicy, they say. Seven point seven percent, fifty IBUs. Let's give it a whirl. Cheers, brother. Cheers. It's obviously can is not the best receptacle for this. Are there glasses over there? No, I don't know where they're at. Uh, I mean, because I have no idea what it looks like, but it tastes delicious. It does. I, I don't know where our glasses went. <laughs> but anyways, whatever. I'm not that worried about it. No, it's fine. This is really good beer. So this is something, if I'm not mistaken, New Belgium with their their series of different voodoo Yeah, so basically beers. they made a Ranger IPA and was like, wow, this sucks because no one wants to buy an IPA. So they actually made a character the Voodoo Ranger, which is like a skeleton character, and just went off of it, and it has... That was our dog from upstairs. No. <laughs> it has just exploded. Like, their Imperial IPA, the Voodoo Imperial IPA, is fantastic. And it's the best-selling IPA in our state, not made in our state still. Exactly. 
Exactly. And it's an out of state. It's a double IPA. It's sold in bottles, which. It checks all the wrong boxes. Exactly. Exactly. Except it's still. They get it at the nine ninety nine, ten ninety nine price point. But anyway, so this falls under the Voodoo Ranger line. Um, they come out. They have a pumpkin that just actually got released recently. An IPA. They had a pale ale, which they DQ'd, which is fine. Pale ales don't really sell as well as they used to. Um, but this is, is their juicy one, man. They they went over and made it, and it's great. And I think this is a fantastic. So beer. they had one before. This is a tropical one, yep. correct? Yep. Yeah, that one was. I had that one. That was pretty good. They have one. I'm gonna try and look this up now. Coming out in September. They did a vote on it. And let's see how fast my computer is. And it's not that fast. I can't find it. Anyways, <laughs> you had to vote on it. I believe it's gonna come out with a galaxy one. And it's like all Star Wars theme, basically. Something nice. Like I don't know. Alright. Can't wait for that cease and desist story. It's not like Star Wars, like, some people go and put, like, Guns N' Roses on beers. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, did I say that out loud? <laughs> it's, like, just outer space themed. <laughs> nice. Nothing? All right. Okay. All right. Well, let's continue. <laughs> uh, You're right. I agree with you. <laughs> Probably shouldn't hey, have done that. I can't remember where what it's called now. I'll, I'll, call, I'll find it. Eventually, and I'll shout it out in the middle of the show. Voodoo, in the last mm-hmm. frontier. Voodoo. Yeah, Juicifer, Liquid Paradise was fantastic. wasn't my cup of tea, but it sold. Um, it came out in a good time, though, mm-hmm. which helped it. Yeah, Atomic Pretty. Pumpkin is money. Yeah, I'm I don't, not, I don't like not it. I'm not a pumpkin beer fan. I'm not either. There's only two pumpkin beers that I liked. I like Ichabod. I'm not sure why. I think it just because it tastes so much like pumpkin pie. Mm-hmm. And Sam Adams used to make one called Double Jack. Yeah. And it was like an 8% just boozy sugar bomb. It was Hang delicious. On. So they did a vote um, for two beers, basically. You got to vote on them, I believe it was spring and summer. And basically, it was between Hop Avenger and Starship IPA. Vote March 1st through 30th. And the winner was... Oh, crap. I just hit the wrong button. <laughs> I just closed <laughs> out the dang window. <laughs> yeah, maybe it'll say here. Hop Avenger wins. So it is the more new age. I guess this is probably like... Star Wars was probably Starship IPA. This might be... I don't know. Look at that. What, what's that one? That's obviously Star Wars with the gun and the little thing. I don't know what that one is. Uh, Superman? Uh, Speaking oh, of Superman, man. I don't know. It's, it's a star. It's a outer space thing. Speaking of Superman, <laughs> I'm going to go back and talk about Jameson for a second. Because I just said Superman. Superman. So his teacher, Lauren Letty, at school... And Lauren Hines taught him how to dance. So basically, like, runs around her house dancing with his fingers in the air like this. Like, I can't say like this. I'm on the radio. <laughs> with his pointer fingers pointed up, just pointing them up and down. So I taught him, Mel and I, we were just in a good mood today. I don't know. We taught him how to do the Superman and what was it? The shoulder lean. And now that might have been it. He, he didn't get how to Superman. What about that, the snanky leg? That thing. Oh, the Dougie. Mel was trying to teach him how to Dougie. I don't know how to Dougie. I was teaching him. It's an easy one. I know that one. He did. He did do the do the potty dance, which I didn't know he had a potty dance. But he potty danced for my sister today on the phone. What's that? uh, What's the potty dance? Um, (laughs) Will you reenact it for me? The Florida clap, (laughs) the Gator clap. (laughs) It was like that. That's the potty (laughs) dance. Start doing it. I'm like, all right, dude, that works. Potty dance. (laughs) Let's do it. (laughs) Money. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Lori. All right. <laughs> uh, money. <laughs> potty dance. Jameson. Jameson. I have a potty dance. J- Jameson says, make money, money. <laughs> I wish I would have known that when dude, he was awake. Th- this kid's, dude, he's a piece of, he should come on the show. We'll have to do it four hours earlier. Mm-hmm. Oh, gosh. All right, so, slow golf. So, yeah, the beer's good. Beer's good. Good job out there. Keep Colorado. it up. New Belgium, you make fantastic liquid. 
All right. It's better when you get it fresh here in Michigan. Yeah. yeah. we got three quick sports segments we're going to go to real fast and then hit you with our top six and some life advice. So, PGA Tour playoffs are officially underway. And Bryson DeChambeau is a slow golfer. He's been criticized for quite a while now for being a yes. slow golfer. Him people and get, Patrick Reed. People hate getting partnered up with both of them because they just take so long to mm-hmm. just do, take their shot. Yeah. Especially, I mean, you got a handful of golfers out there that are just, they go out there and hit the ball and they're so naturally gifted. They don't have to set everything up and take 17 practice swings and reread the green 12 times. And But the thing that is frustrating, like, if it was the 17th hole of the fourth round and it, he was down a stroke, I think people would have understood. But it was the second round of, like, the front nine is where the controversy started. Yeah. And, and he wasn't even in contention no. with the lead. No, he finished tied 24th at minus one. And, oh, no, minus seven, sorry. Hit minus one in round four. But so this is one of those things, like, you're not even... I think if you're doing good, you get a little more leniency in those rules and everything. But since you're not, then that sucks. I, I, I don't know. So this is how I would fix it. Implement some sort of shot clock. They, they have one. So when you walk, once you find your ball and address your ball, you have 40 seconds to take your shot. So that is walking up. So say you and I are on the fairway. Well, I'm on the fairway. You're in the woods. <laughs> 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 That's probably pretty accurate. You go out, you shank your ball. Okay, whatever. You hit your ball. So then, okay, you hit your ball. I look at you. All right, my turn. I walk up to my ball. I have 40 seconds now to hit the ball. That's the rule. Yeah. It just isn't enforced. Okay, enforce said shot clock. Now. Exactly. And That's So if you take longer than 40 seconds, you can get a, a stroke penalty, penalty stroke. Yep. I mean, that's in golf, that's literally the only... Yeah. It's and the that's, only way you can penalize somebody. You hit, you hit the ball in the water. What's going to happen? You're going to get a penalty stroke. It's what it is. Take a drop. It's just, a penalty stroke. It's never been yep. enforced to this point. So Brooks Kepka, one of the faster players on tour, hey, let's enforce this. Now the PGA is reviewing things and will hopefully enforce it. The only thing I don't know is the good thing about like NBA and the NHL, you can have a clock. Are you going to have your guy who has your scoreboard with the two players on it carry around a shot clock? No, why not? I mean, just no, like I know. some sort of like no. digital clock in the yeah. bottom of that board. It'd yeah, exactly, exactly. Maybe that's what they got to do. So, we'll I mean, shoot, they got one for baseball now too, and that's right. actually fairly well enforced. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now it, it's just the point of it's just the rhythm of the game now. Exactly, and you have to enforce it. I feel like at the start of the season, which is three weeks away, mm-hmm. rather than you can't you're, you can't enforce that during the playoffs. Like that, that's just in no, my you opinion start ridiculous. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, my Amazon package was delivered. That's fantastic. Thanks for telling me. After my computer's been up for an hour and a half. <laughs> yeah, another one. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's golf. No, I, I totally I, totally agree with that. Yeah, I think they should because 18 holes should take you uh, four and a half hours. Walking, yeah. Yeah. Walking, four people. And they have two people walking with caddies. And I know something they've considered is letting them use range finders, which they can during their practice rounds and everything to mark range. But like at my point, like, who cares? like they're marking a tree. Okay, this tree is 240 yards. Pull out a range finder tells me that too. At this point, like, why not? Like the technology is there. Just let them use it. Everyone else uses it. You get to use it Monday through Wednesday when you're on the course. Why not go out there? All right, cool, caddy man. First thing you tell me is your your range and that's honestly the smallest thing that they talk about between the caddy and the golfer it's okay i have 240 yards they look at where the pin is it's more or less how am i coming into the hole am i drawing am i fading is it a three-quarter swing is it a punch shot is it a flop shot is it this is it that those are the conversations it's not how many yards is it once they know their yardage it's done and that's me like when i go up and golf once i know my yardage like, I'm not a good golfer, so I don't know how to, <laughs> like, draw my shot or anything. It's like, oh, 120 yards? Cool, pitching wedge. I have no other thought in my mind. Yeah, I don't know how far <laughs> I hit my irons because I'm so inconsistent with them, so it's always just a crapshoot for me. Mm-hmm. But I just thought of a possible multi-million dollar idea. Money, give it to me. I'm going to tell you off the air because it might be that good. 
No, okay. I'm going to tell you right now. Do it. All right, so. <laughs> we own this idea. By Imagine the way, if you will. I'm imagining. Um, I so close my eyes. Google glasses are a thing. You can just, like, look stuff up on. You, you heard of those, haven't you? Mm-hmm. So imagine if we made glasses for caddies to wear that told you, like, in the left eye, like, the wind that's blowing. Mm -hmm. And in the right eye, it tells you, it's a range finder, and it tells you how far away from whatever you're looking at. Or hell, dude, those courses are so, like, high tech and everything, you could put it on a watch. Where your watch is pinged and you just hit, okay, I'm on the third hole. Hit the third hole and it, no matter where your watch is, it will ping right to the flag stick. You know, and that's you a much better idea. <laughs> then you've got your glasses. <laughs> they make watches that give you the center of the green. So, yeah, why not hit there? Okay, cool. You want a watch? Awesome. Your caddy has to wear the watch. It'll tell you if you want to put weather on there, too, I guess. Sure, why not? I mean, what's it going to hurt? I mean, hell, what I'm wearing right now is plenty big Yeah, it's a smart sky. watch. It's, yep. it's basically the same thing. And you just go up there, okay, you sink it with the course, and all of a sudden... yards out from the pin, because yeah, the pin's got a little The pin's got the little in chip it. in it, and all of a sudden, boom, it tells you exactly where you're at. Why not? Son of a gun. Our idea. Money. Matt's it's, idea. We, we're we going to... Yeah, this, you can't. Go, nobody else... Go check trademarks. Let's buy one. You got to buy trademarks? I don't even I know. I think you need a thing to trademark before you're... It's an idea. Can we, can we trademark ideas? Uh, you can patent an idea. Let's patent it. And then sell it for millions. Yeah, we should probably have some sort of working thing. We have an idea. We just don't have the math. <laughs> I'm not a math guy. I'm an idea guy. <laughs> we all know this. It this sucks. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Where are the smart people? Please come on. We're like Siegfried and Siegfried. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Roy. Roy. Speaking of Roy, and we don't need a tiger. Antonio Brown, you want to talk about this? Speaking of Roy, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to transition. Move um, along. So yeah, Antonio Brown, AB, Adam's homeboy, Adam's favorite person in the world, and yeah. really close to Adam's heart. You got to watch him play in college. They're like best friends. Um, Antonio Brown now for hey I'll, several I'll, years. We, we had mutual friends, so. Hey. Antonio Brown for several years. Um, 12. No. Listen, hear me out here. Okay. For several years, he has been very unprofessional in the way he deals with certain things. Okay. Mainly the last three or so. Okay. I'll give you that. Um, he has not been the shining star, I was hoping. No. I mean, he's he's a professional athlete. I get it. He's a millionaire. and But he's... He's been essentially throwing. Oh, good thing you never use that treadmill. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Soak it up with that floor mat you never use. There you go. It's <laughs> fine. Um, so he's essentially throwing a giant temper tantrum. Again, only this time it's over a helmet. So if you hadn't heard the news, Antonio Brown wants to wear the same style of helmet that he's been wearing for the last 12 years, 11 years, whatever it was. Apparently, it's the same helmet. No. No way. That's what I thought, but... I think it's the style. Right. Okay. Because it's... You never played football, right? No. So, when I played football, um, my freshman and sophomore year of high school, we had um, these crappy, like, Rydell helmets. They were like... Yeah. I look like bulky a ones. Yeah. dork out there, like big, bulky, <laughs> smooth, what goofy looking have? thing. But that's what they gave the Lymans because they had like the Lyman cages on the front with mm-hmm. all the extra bars and stuff. Um, and then once we got to my junior and senior year, the school started. I mean, it was I was playing football like right through the whole CTE concussion protocol all through that crap when that that became <laughs> huge. Like that's when we were in school was when. People are like, oh, people are getting hit in the head too hard, and they're right. losing brain cells, and they're shooting themselves in the chest with a shotgun, you know? <laughs> um, so the uh, the junior, I think my junior high school is when we started getting these revolution helmets, they were called. And these are mm-hmm. like the first ones that started the trend towards safer helmets because you could pump air in different pockets all over the helmet to fit your head better, um, so that way you had a tight fit. And your head couldn't bounce around so much in it. So if he did get hit, there was enough cushioning to dampen the blow um, and still enough padding to not make it hurt so bad, whatever. 
Um, so Antonio Brown had been using the same style of helmet for years, and basically years. he was from college. Yeah, basically he was. I don't know if he was grandfathered in or what the heck he was. It was so the rule was you had ten a, a, a helmet had to be renewed every year, and they wouldn't renew any design over ten years old. And okay, then yep, he yep, was that's grandfathered in for two years. Yep, him and Brady. I think there might have been a handful of other guys. But um, Brady's so the other big one. These these new helmets they fit different. I mean the the bar orientation is the same. You got to think these guys' jobs is to wear a helmet constantly. Mm-hmm. So they get used to how heavy this helmet is, how it fits on their head. I get it. I understand. But at the same time, it's a damn helmet. Just go out and practice with it. You'll get used to it. And if you're really worried that, oh, I'm not going to be able to run my routes the right way, come on. <laughs> Quit being such a wuss. All right. So I, I think this is the perfect example of the rich people throwing an unnecessary temper tantrum just to try to get their way. Yeah. Because it's, I understand 100% what the NFL is doing because they've had all this controversy mm-hmm. with concussions and the CTE and these movies come out with Will Smith and, I mean, it's it's obviously a, a, a issue that the NFL has had to face and has trickled down all the way down to peewee leagues in football. So why not send a good precedent right at the top and say, we're going to use the safe helmets? I mean, it's you don't have a choice. We're going to use the safe helmets because this is what we say we're doing, and you are playing in our league, so you have to abide by our rules. I agree. Like I like you said, I'm a huge Antonio Brown fan. I've been an Antonio Brown fan uh, for the last 12, 13, 14 years. You know, I, I followed him through college. Obviously, went to the same college. That's my uh, affiliation with him. But I completely understand where the NFL is coming from. It is a privilege to pay, play in the NFL. It is not a right. You are a good football player. You get to play in the NFL. You get to make $20 million a year for playing football. But we, as the NFL, have all the science and research to tell you this is the equipment you need to wear to do so. Mm-hmm. You don't want to wear it? Cool. Go, go play um, Canadian football. Go yep. play overseas. Go, go play, play arena football. Like, go the, play golf quickly. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't play it slow. You might get in trouble. But that's what it is. And for Antonio Brown, okay, you're 30 years old, 31 years old. You are nine, ten year veteran in the league now. Just get a different helmet, dude. Yep. Like you're at this point, you're he's just making controversy to make controversy, and I'm not a huge fan of it by any means. And then, um, it, and then it came out today that his his appeal got yeah got denied. denied. Yeah. And he's like, well, I'm looking forward. He was saying this whole time he's starting to retire and all. This no, crap. he wasn't going to retire. He goes, I'm looking forward to rejoining my team with my new helmet. Come the on, lifestyle man. he lives now, he cannot live on that. Same lifestyle if he retires. Oh no, no, definitely not. He he'd have to pay back thirty two million dollars if he walks away today. So, Adam, <laughs> I'll be lucky to make thirty two million dollars in three lifetimes. <laughs> I'll take a million. <laughs> um, no, I, I completely agree with that. NFL did. They, they they saved their butts. They did the right thing. Um, at the end of the day, hey, they called Antonio Brown's bluff. Are they going to lose viewership? Because Antonio Brown is not in the league. If that, if for some reason he does decide not to play football because of this helmet thing, no, no, he plays for the Raiders. Even if he played for the Pats, even if he played for the Rams, he is. Yes, he's very publicly known, but his publicity on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat is still there without football. Absolutely. So for him to go put a helmet on, hide his face. And all you see is the back of his jersey and his name. The NFL is not going to care. They don't need you that. Could, I bet you you can line me up the top 25 highest paid NFL players, and I could pick 10 on that lineup. Just With, looking like, at their faces. Oh, yeah. It is so Because you don't difficult. see their face. No. The only time you see their face is a little thumbnail like fantasy football yeah. or on the bottom of a screen or something like that when they're showing their highlights. You don't see their faces. So that's such a, a weird – it's such a weird thing that we as American sports fans fantasize with is we are in love with these professional athletes that do these superhuman things every single Sunday, Monday, Thursday, whenever it is. And all we see is a jersey with not their mm-hmm. real shoulders underneath and – a head that's not theirs, but mm-hmm. the team they play for. Yeah. And so we are rooting for somebody with a last name and a number, mm-hmm. and that's it. And we don't know who they are. I mean, we, we look at baseball and soccer and um, basketball. Basketball. 
hockey even. I mean, hockey, yeah, they got, like, visors and stuff, but you can still see their mm-hmm. face. Mm-hmm. You know who these guys are, and you can see their emotions and everything. But, no, in football, you got these big cages and visors and helmets and the mouth guards, and you can't see emotion. This is the perfect transition because we can't see emotion, yet social media gives us the ability to see them off the field. True. Okay. Very true. And I have, for the longest time, always believed and always tried to never fall in love with a player. You always fall in like with them because <laughs> they can get traded. And at the end of the day, who do you root for? You root for your team. Yep. Don't root for your player. You root for your team. Well, I have to admit I have fallen in love with Matt Stafford. <laughs> Why? Because, one, I've been told I look like him, kind of, sort of. I think it's just... I don't it, think so. The, 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 scru- beard. the scruffy beard and the hat, I, I think that's the only reason. <laughs> Which is 95% of the population of 30-year-old men. So, <laughs> like, whatever. But, anyways, um, his wife and his family life and all the stuff she posts on Instagram and Snapchat and everything that I see is just, yep, yep, fell in love with him. Oops, my bad. He's got the longest leash in my book, and I apologize to all my Lions fans because that's not the way it should be. <laughs> I got to say, I have always been a Stafford fan. He gets a lot of crap. Um, I would love to see him play his entire career, which he probably will now play his entire career. No one's, yeah, no one's taking that contract. And I am more than happy to be a fan of Stafford. Wouldn't say I'm in love with him, but I'm a huge fan of him. The last player that I loved watch play, I think it was Priest Holmes. Mm-hmm. For whatever mm-hmm. reason, I had a short stint in my life where I was kind of a Kansas City Chiefs fan. <laughs> and I loved watching Priest Holmes. He was he was the best back that I watched play since Barry Sanders, you know? Right, right. Oh, he was, definitely. So, I mean, it was. I loved watching him play. I was a big Keyshawn Johnson fan, too. Keyshawn. Honestly, though, you know what? The player that I love, and I agree with everything you said about Stafford, and I'm a huge Lions fan, but that's, I totally agree. I mean, he's got a great family life. He's got a good head and his shoulders. He's a good dude. Um, and he's like, he's all day, around. He's a good, he is, he's a good dude, and he's, he's tougher than nails, man. He's a tough dude. Um, but the... Uh, the the player that I have loved for a long time, see if you can guess him, plays for Arizona. Oh, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald. I love Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> he's, he's, he's the best, man. <laughs> see, but that's and different, though. And he's freaking brilliant. Oh, he is yeah. one of the smartest people in the NFL. You fell in love with a player that isn't on your team. Which is fine. Mm-hmm. Like, Antonio Brown. Like, I love Antonio Brown. He's not on my team. He was yeah, yeah, It's he, a little different, though. He, he fell in love with him because he Because he went to Central went and he goes to the, the Steelers. I've always been a Steelers fan, kind of, sort of. But at the end of the day, I'm going to root for my Lions before my Steelers. That's the way it is. But I fell in love with Matt Stafford. I'm sorry. I do like him. Matt Stafford. He's a good dude. But, yeah, Larry Fitzgerald, man. It's... he's And he's good. And like, he's in, in his golden years. And he's still putting up solid numbers as a receiver. First ballot Hall of Famer. Oh, easy. Easy. No question. If he's not, I'm going to storm the castle. Storm it. <clears throat> Storming it. So, yeah, Stafford, have a good season, man. Yeah, good luck. Keep it up, man. Let's give us uh, nine wins this year. I think that's what I predicted. <clears throat> yeah, just just keep winning. Just win. I don't really care how many. Yeah, I don't care how you win. Just, just, just win. win. Do it. I don't care. <laughs> All right, top six. Let's move on. Top six this week, seeing as we're drinking the uh, Juicifer IPA, we had something picked out that we had used before, so we changed it last minute and revamped our list. Top six uh, okay. juices. I did the one we picked out before two hours, or three hours before the show started, so <laughs> it was still pretty last minute, but whatever. <laughs> All right, top six. Here we go. Number six. I think you're first this week. All right, top six juices. Apple juice. All right. I'm not a big juice drinker. I don't drink juice. I've never really been a juice fan. Um, more water or Gatorade person myself. And a little, oh, you know what? 
No, it's not a juice, though. Arnold Palmer's not a juice. It is not. Okay. It is tea and lemonade. Right. Okay. All right. That was my number six apple juice. My uh, my number six is good for the old urinary system. Cranberry juice. I, I don't like cranberry juice. I like cranberry juice. You got this thing out there, this white cranberry juice, so it's sweeter. No. No. You ain't go this regular old bitter cranberries. Number five. My number five, though, is cranberry pomegranate. So I do oh, like a little more fruit cran- in there. Cran palm, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. Which is funny because Melanie is not a huge fan of that. She likes the cran apple, me? The crapple. Yep. I'm not a, a crapple fan. I, I'm not a huge apple juice fan. I, I put it on my number six because I didn't know you any just other ran juices. Out of juices. This is going to be the cheese. I got to put something this on there. It's going to be the cheese thing all over <laughs> again. <laughs> no, maybe. <laughs> um, so my number five is purple grape juice. Oh, instead of white grape juice. Yes, a little foreshadowing here. No, I'm saying it's purple instead of white. Yes. Purple is number five. Yes. Okay. Purple. Okay. Grape juice. All okay. right. Number four. Again, I don't like a lot of juice. Apple cider. I like fresh apple cider. I do. Put a little spiced rum in there. Maybe some diarrhea mm. in the next morning, but yeah, it's worth it. It's okay. Definitely worth it. It'll clean you out, make you feel better at the end of the day. <laughs> or, or a couple days later, maybe, but... Um, orange juice. That That's solid. Just because... You, you can't go wrong with No, nah, I mean, so the thing is, the reason it's so low on my list is the acidity content of orange juice upsets my tum-tum sometimes. <laughs> unless I eat some food beforehand. It's like coffee, you know? If you don't eat before you drink coffee, it's going to a bellyache. Oh, yeah, dude, that's, that's, that's horrible. Is coffee juice... No. <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Number three. Um, I went to a throwback here, and by a throwback, I mean I haven't had it in years. Uh, V8 Veggie Medley. So it's got a bunch of vegetables in it. I know what V8 is. Well, no, but there's a, br- like, V8's brand, there's a flavor called Vegetable Medley. Medley? Okay. That That's the one I like. Okay. Don't just give me V8 juice. Well, I don't even know what, what that's just tomato juice. That's vegetable juice. Yeah. No. All V8 juice is vegetable juice. No, I know. But I like the veggie medley. It's the purple flavor. Okay. That's the one I, I, guess I prefer. I've never, I've never bought that one. See? Look. Changing it up on you. You thought I was going to go all grape and apple and strawberry juice. Nope. Went strawberry juice. Med- <laughs> <laughs> strawberry juice. Hey. Hey, things can happen. You don't know. I still got two more left. Um, <laughs> that's like wait what <laughs> um, my number we're on three right yeah we're on three apple juice that's all I'll go to yeah just apple juice oh, I'm apple gonna juice. throw apple juice and apple cider in there because I'll drink both I'll, I'll mix them together sometimes really oh, yeah a little tart with a little sweet a little sweet oh. tart okay touche number two OJ OJ is my go-to. Are you a pulp or no pulp? Yeah, no pulp. Oh, pulp the hell out of it for me. <laughs> I want to be drinking some dental floss. No, Shana no hates pulp. pulp. I think that's why I like pulp even more is because I can't get pulp. <laughs> See, Melanie doesn't like pulp, which is fine. I, I don't think I really care either way, but because Melanie doesn't drink it, then I don't drink it. It's so. like the one and only opportunity you have in the whole juice realm to chew your juice. Who wants to chew their juice? It's just a cool feeling. No. I want to chew something. I want it to be some bacon. Yeah. Bacon juice? <laughs> no. I don't want to chew my juice. I'm saying <laughs> I want to chew something that's going to be bacon. In the morning, the best morning. Here. Here's my number one morning. My and number one morning. <laughs> morning numero uno. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow, bow. Uh, bacon and egg. Or bacon? No, no bacon. Never scratch the bacon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I want bacon. Eggs over easy. Rye toast. Hash browns. Sausage links. Not patties. Patties are BS. Sausage links. OJ. Tim Horns coffee. Your turn. I. Wh- You're number two. I don't we, know. We've been talking about juice. Still? Juice. Okay. <laughs> that's that's hey that's where that's that's where it goes. All right. My number two is tomato juice because it's so versatile. You can use it in a Bloody Mary. You can you use it just me. as tomato juice. You can mix you can mix it with beer and make a, a colada or a chalada. 
Um, you can use it for a soup stock. You can do everything with tomato juice. I love tomato juice. Bro, a little salt in there. Do you that like tomatoes? Boy? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought you didn't like tomatoes. I love tomatoes. I eat everything except for canned tuna. I don't eat tuna. Number one. So we at, we talked about this before because I needed to know if it was a juice, and I, I argue that it was lemonade because you put lemon juice and sugar and you make lemonade and water. Well, no joke. It's basically apple juice. You put apple juice, sugar, and water. Lemonade because I love Arnold Palmer. At the end of the day, I, like, I couldn't I couldn't argue too hard against it. So. Oops. Number one. That's my fault. Yeah, that's that not on not you. That was not your fault for a change. <laughs> I, I apologize for that. Yeah, I, I couldn't argue against lemonade. I love me some lemonade. So my number one. So if you remember, way, way, way back when I was talking about purple grape juice. Yeah, I white, do remember. White grape juice. No way. Yes. Is that where you're going with that? Yes. White Fine. grape juice is delicious. It's amazing, really. And honestly, if you open up a bottle of white grape juice and you just drink a little bit off the top and you just, you know, leave it in your fridge for several weeks. Becomes wine? It will ferment, yeah. Which Dude. Most other juices actually, will do the same thing. Uh, we did that with, unintentionally, apple cider when we were in college. Oh, yeah. Like, we bought some and it was like, it's just like the little thing. Totally forgot about it because you're in college and you put your fridge in your freaking uh, closet. Mel's giving me the look. I don't know why. Anyways, you put it in your closet. And it was like two months later. Like, oh, is this any good? And I went to smell. I'm like, oh, it's booze. <laughs> it's even better. Jesus was here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, life advice. Uh, we talked about this for a little bit. Take your kid fishing. Absolutely, take your kid Absolutely. fishing. Absolutely. We bought Jameson. I'm not a big fisherman. I, I'll admit. I like to go out. Have a couple cold beverages, put some worms on a hook, put them in the water, take a nap, reel it in, go back in. If I catch something <laughs> cool, if not, whatever. You know, like, it's not to me like, oh my god, I'm so upset I didn't catch anything. Do I really try that hard? Probably not, but that's okay. But we bought Jameson a fishing pole um, with a little foam hook on it, so he's not like swinging around like hooking people because he's kind of crazy. But he's got a good cast, and it's awesome. Do you have, like, a uh, wrist wrap for him so he doesn't, like, the Wii remote? So he doesn't throw his pole into the water? No, that's why I had to jump in the water on Saturday. I was actually <laughs> to get the pole because the, the foam hook was floating, and I'm like, son of a gun. <laughs> like, there it goes. I jumped in. It was only waist deep, which was okay. But I was really <laughs> nervous because we were probably four feet from the drop-off in the lake. <laughs> so it could have been really bad. <laughs> Fantastic. So... As a not serious fisherman, one thing I've only done like a handful of times is clean a fish. All right. Your advice to people is how to clean a fish. Yeah. So, like Adam said, take your kids fishing. I mean, every I think it's twice a year, maybe just once a year. They have free fishing weekend. Mm -hmm. Just go out. Which with your honestly, kids. that's for you, not the kid, because you don't have. As long as you're under eighteen, you don't. Yeah, you don't have to go buy a license. The kid yeah. doesn't, but. Um, for you to go out, if you just want to take your kid fishing once in the summer and go out for a weekend with your kid and free fishing weekend, there we go. Problem solved. June. Yep. Father's Day weekend or the weekend before or after, something like that. Yeah, don't quote us on that. Look it up. We don't it's right around there, though. Yeah, I know it is, but yeah. I don't want to be responsible for somebody being an idiot. Oh, no. I'm an idiot enough myself. So, yeah, take <laughs> your kid fishing. I am... I wouldn't say I'm a serious fisher because I don't do it as nearly as much as I want to, but if I'm not catching fish, I get really pissed, and I want to go where the fish are. So I will move around until I find the fish, um, which is what we did this last week, and we were pretty successful finding fish. But cleaning fish. So fish cleaning is different with different types of fish. First, you know? make sure they're dead. No. If they're not, smash their head with a hammer. No, come on now. <laughs> Really? That's what I do? No, you don't have to kill them. Just cut their head off. Oh, God. So what you do is so they have the little... So cut a bunch of perches last week, and then most of them weren't dead when we cleaned them. So you go right behind the the, the fins um, on the on their belly, behind their gills, and you cut pretty much straight down behind their, their fins in the side, and you just chop their head off, and then they're dead. You don't have to worry about it. 
So then you take <laughs> the trick, is, especially with perch and other panfish, is you start at the spine, and you just slowly work your way back the fillet knife along the rib. Make page. sure it's sharp. Yeah, I've you're done it with a dull. If you're using a dull knife, doesn't turn just out good. get out of the kitchen. Let somebody knows what they're doing. Come in there. <laughs> so you start at the spine. You work your way down to the belly, and you cut that fillet off. And then you flip it over. Do the same thing. Don't get any of the guts in it. Throw the guts away. And then you start at the tail. What I've always done is I take a fork and I stab right in the tail. And I cut down to the skin and the fillet and just nice sharp knife. Just slice it off. And you get some beautiful fillets that way. Um, cleaning fish is not that difficult. So I did learn from a lady when I was tip-up fishing a couple years ago. and I haven't had a chance to try it since then. There's a way to get the Y bones out of a pike. And someday when I catch a pike, I'm going to take a video of it and share it with all of you because it's good advice to have because pike is delicious. <laughs> I just haven't had a chance to – I haven't caught a pike since I learned how to do this new technique, cutting all the wide bones out. That's the worst part about a pike, that and they could bite your finger off. Um, but yeah, they're cutting the wide bones out, and it's basically like a big, giant fillet that way. I just try to catch bass. Bass? Are fun to catch. Honestly, not that great eating. I mean, I, I don't have a problem with but, them, but see, I like whitefish. Like to me, a smoke. Oh yeah, whitefish. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, that same thing exactly. with like perch and walleye. I mean, you smoke them or you deep fry them, and exactly. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, I love eating all the fish. But if you talk to an avid fish eater, oh, bass isn't so good. And neither is carp, and I mean, carp is terrible. And so it's sucker. Oh, bro, I catch like fish. four fish a year, so I'm eating it. <laughs> like. <laughs> by the time I butcher the foy, I got about yay left, and by yay I mean like five oh, inches. Oh man, I'm gonna have to teach you how to. Oh. I'm not good, dude. I'm gonna have to teach you how to fillet a fish. I give it to my brother over here. Do it. I'm done. That's some. How do you? Uh, where you're gonna? I'm gonna. We'll talk off air. Yeah. All right. Morning ritual. Do you have a morning ritual? Ninety-one percent people said yes. Do you have a morning ritual? I Routine, think ritual something along. I the do lines. on accident. Is it something you just do? It's not like you get up and like, hey, I have to do this. The one thing I have to do when I get up usually is take a dump. (laughs) I was going to say that. (laughs) It's kind of how my clock is set right now. (laughs) Dude, it's honestly like... It's a lot better to do it there than like at noon. And you're getting paid for it though. Yeah, but it's the whole, you know, you got to find somewhere to go. Yeah, I like to cluster... In around the showers, <laughs> so I feel fresh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I'm in the same boat. <laughs> I have a morning routine. It's very get up, change the diaper, feed the dog, make the lunch, get the kids dressed, take them to school, go to work. But I think anyone. With any sort of responsibility on a regular basis has a morning routine. If you don't have a morning Especially routine. Especially with kids. If you don't have a morning routine, you either don't have a family or you have a really awesome job. By awesome, I mean you work at night and you get to make your own hours, one of the two. Hey, Jameson thinks you do nothing, so watch You know, yourself. Jameson, I'm going to beat your kid up. <laughs> no, you're not. No, I'm not. <laughs> he went He went pee. He would be. He was so excited. Body by himself. <laughs> All right. Subscribe, rate, listen everywhere you listen to podcasts. Give us a review, or read on there. We're just by email dads on diaper duty at gmail dot com. Facebook, Instagram at dads on diaper duty, and we'll be back next week. You got a joke? I do, but first, I have a quick potty training story. Okay. Uh, I wasn't potty trained until I was like four and a half because I was a terrible kid. It's a hell of a story. And uh, I get really dehydrated. I go to the hospital and get to pee in a bedside, like bedpan urinal thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, it's the coolest thing ever. So I left the hospital potty train. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Thought it was really cool. I get to pee in a <laughs> urinal. That's awesome. Um, so did you know that the first French fries were not fried in France? They're actually fried in Greece. <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> Matt's done. That's I love over. that one. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>
about that.